Well, Senator Tom Cotton and Congressman Andy Barr want to kill ESG for good, put a spike through it. They say ESG companies put progressivism ahead of profit. Got that right. Both gentlemen join me now. Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton and Kentucky Congressman Andy Barr. Gentlemen, uh, good to see you. Uh, you know, Tom Cotton, I agree with everything you said. Of course I do. Uh, it's just a bunch of left-wing progressive stuff. But sometimes it's hard to figure out what's ESG and what's not ESG, right? Because it's not just taking money away from oil and gas companies, fossil fuels. They got social policy and woke policy and uh, diversity and equity. And who the hell knows what ESG means anymore? Yeah, Larry, you raise a good point. It's one reason why the, ball, the bill I have with Congress and Barr would put it in the investors' hands. It would insist that people like Larry Fink and BlackRock and other asset managers get the explicit approval of their clients that they invest their money on something other than seeking the highest rate of return. Because there's a few problems with ESG. The first is that it's guided by political decision making, you know, from big public pensions in states like California and their liberal friends in Wall Street. Um, and it's also a potential antitrust violation when these firms collude together. It also means that investors sometimes lose out. You know, last year, energy outperformed the S&P index. Mm -hmm. I think it was the only sector to do that. Yet a lot of investors missed out on it because ESG investment managers weren't invested in it. So the simple solution that Congressman Barr and I propose is leave the choice in the hands of the investor. You know, uh, just as an aside, Andy, I'm coming to you in a second. But uh, Mr. Tom Cotton... That, that little phrase, they're liberal friends on Wall Street. I just want I, I was I worked on Wall Street for about 15 years. It was a long time ago, but I was a conservative on Wall Street. Just saying, there are few conservatives left on Wall Street. They're not all lefty. I don't know, maybe it's all changed now. I, you know, I was there. Anyway, Andy Barr, you got a bill in the House to accomplish what Senator Cotton wants to accomplish? Yeah, we call it the ESG Act, but instead of environmental, social, and governance, um, we call it the Ensuring Sound Guidance Act. It would require investment advisors and ERISA plan sponsors to prioritize the financial performance of Americans' 401ks and their savings, uh, as opposed to these non-financial factors like politics. Uh, and Senator Cotton is absolutely right. We put uh, the control back in the hands of the investors as opposed to these uh, stakeholders, non-investor stakeholders, or uh, woke asset managers, or institutional investors who are not the beneficial owners of the capital. And, and Larry, I have to address this laughable argument uh, by many of our Democratic colleagues who oppose our legislation who say that we're against the free market, that ESG investing is capitalism. Uh, that's nonsense. If ESG was the free market, why do we need the Securities and Exchange Commission to interfere in the market and steer retail investors into these higher fee, less diversified, lower performing funds? Why do we need the Department of Labor, the Biden Department of Labor, to steer Americans into these lower performing funds which discriminate against American energy companies? It's nonsense. We are defending the free flow of capital to its highest and best use, and we're getting liberal proxy advisory firms and the government out of the way. Well, I think, uh, by the way, you're right. I mean, it's state-directed capitalism, which uh, Newt Gingrich calls big government socialism. It's central planning, just a bunch of darn central planning. Uh, I think you've got the ESG crowd on the run, at least this guy Larry Fink. I've got, I think you got him on the run. Uh, I'd be afraid of Tom Cotton myself. I am afraid of Tom Cotton, actually. Uh, Andy Barr, you're a nice fellow. You're, you know, we can do business together. But I wouldn't want to mess with uh, Mr. Cotton. Mr. Cotton, I'm reading one of your quotes here. I'm going to jump shift just a little bit since all three of us agree to get rid of ESG. Um, Democrats and the mainstream media are acting as, quote, a phalanx of bodyguards for the Biden family crimes. Now, that is a nice turn of the phrase, a phalanx of bodyguards. And as you know, Senator Cotton, the uh, Delaware uh, Hunter Biden thing kind of blew up today, which may open some interesting possibilities. Um, I'm waiting for the Senate. Where's you senators, Republican senators, you got to get on this. This is big stuff. I, the leadership is, I don't, I'm, I'm reading terrible, th you and Ted Cruz and all the, the the cons good conservatives, you got to get on this thing. They may wind up impeaching in the House. 
Well, Larry, I don't think Chuck Schumer is going to be hopping on anytime soon here in the Senate, but thankfully we have great leaders like Andy Barr and Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan, James Comer in the House, who have conducted numerous oversight hearings, who have exposed via some of these new whistleblowers the efforts to cover up all of Hunter Biden's crimes and the way they implicate President Biden. Now, if we had a liberal media that did not act like a phalanx of bodyguards around Joe Biden and the Biden family. We might have known before today that the plea agreement between the Biden Department of Justice and Hunter Biden last month purported to give him total immunity for all past crimes and misdeeds. And that's what blew up in, uh, the plea deal today. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the judge rejecting it. It's that the U.S. attorney sheepishly admitted that they couldn't guarantee it. And Hunter Biden's lawyers, who obviously knew that that's, that's what they were pursuing, refused to go forward with the plea deal unless it gave him blanket immunity for all crimes. So let's be clear. There's no confusion here between these two sides. When the Biden Department of Justice and Hunter Biden's criminal defense attorneys sit down, those aren't adversaries negotiating. Those are co-conspirators strategizing. Now what the Department of Justice should do is what they should have done all along, allow their investigators to pursue the facts wherever right. they lead right. and charge Hunter Biden with the crimes right. that he has committed and take it to a jury trial. hundred percent. That's why I think a jury trial would be a fabulous uh, outcome for this whole thing. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you for coming on the show. You're hundred percent right about ESG. Uh, keep doing it, and um, you get these Wall Street guys. Uh, they're starting to fold a little bit. They're moving back now. They see. I don't want to, you know. As I say, Andy Barr, you're a nice fellow, but Tom, I wouldn't want to mess with Tom Cotton. No way. <laughs>